Turkish Relief and welcome to my book nook. We are monsters. We give and we take. For those that are new around here, the name's Rainy, and I read all different types of books from all different types of genres. And so if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe down below to my channel. It really helps my channel grow. Today's video is episode two in the Booktuber Taste Test, where I basically choose one of my friends to recommend a couple of books to me, and we see if our tastes actually align. And in episode one, we had the lovely Brittany from Brittany is Reading, and in episode two, we have Leandra from the Leandra TBR Zero. And I love her so very much. Basically how this works, if you didn't watch the first episode, which I will link to it under here if you want to watch and catch up, but it is where you recommend a book that you didn't like that you think they would love, a book you loved that you think they would love, and a book that you haven't read but that you think they would love. The point is to get three books that they will end up loving. And so I picked three books for Leandra and she chose three books for me. So if you want to see what I chose Leandra and how it went, please go watch her video underneath here. Go support her. Go give her all the love. I love her as a person. She is fabulous. She deserves all the subscribers ever. So go check her out and go watch our video. So tag team off of this. And then if you want to see what she recommended to me, then keep on watching. And let me just say, this is the most chaotic vlog I've probably ever done. It gets unhinged. It gets wild. It gets crazy. Be there for the ride. And here we go. Okay friends, so I just got Leandra's video with my three book recommendations and I'm not gonna lie, I'm insanely scared because me and Leandra have very different tastes, but I'm interested to see what she chose for me. So with that, let's dive in. Hey Rainian friends, I'm so excited to be a part of your second episode for the booktuber taste test. I did my research, I went and watched episode one with Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading and you did a really good job, but you also, uh, we're able to kind of investigate knowing Brittany, knowing who she is. And so I've decided that the second episode is hopefully going to be a toughie for you. I have taken way too much time trying to choose the three books that I'm going to be assigning you. And I think I did a good job of choosing three books that no one would affiliate with me because they're in genres that I just don't tend to read. And I also did restrict myself though to your physical TBR. Because I'm Leandra the TBR Zero, of course I'm going to encourage you to pick up books from your own shelves and so all three of these books will be accessible for you and I'm really excited to help you tick three books off of that major physical TBR that you own. All right so in no particular order the first book I'm going to be assigning you is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. The reason why I think it's outside of my usual reading preferences is because it is historical fiction mixed with contemporary fiction. This follows an interracial rock group from the 70s, their breakup, and then their potential reunion decades later. The second book that I'm assigning you... Okay, hold on. Okay. I almost got rid of that. I was so close to getting rid of that when I did my uh, timer, like 50 books in like 50 set minutes or however many I gave myself. I was so close to getting rid of it. And then I was like, no, Rainy, like you just bought it. Like you'll like it. It's, it's like Daisy Jones and the Six. It's Fleetwood Mac vibes. Like it'll be great. Yet I was so close to getting rid of it. <sighs> All right. We're gonna read it. We're gonna read it. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's not gonna be boring. I just don't feel like it's gonna be on that Daisy Jones level, but we're gonna go with it. All right, let's see what's next. Is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors. The reason why this isn't something I typically read is because it's literary fiction mixed with romance. It follows these two people, Cleo and Frank. Uh, they end up kind of making a deal where they have an impulsive marriage uh, because Cleo's visa is about to end, uh, but there is an age gap involved. And the third book that I'm assigning... Okay, I'm so freaking excited. That's on my 24 and 24. I've been wanting to read this book since I bought it a year and a half ago. I'm so stoked for this. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. I love choice number two. You for this challenge is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Now this one is outside of my wheelhouse as well because it's fantasy. It follows Piranesi. His world is made up of labyrinths of hallways and it's the only world he's ever really known but he knows the ins and outs of it uh, until someone enters his labyrinth and makes him wonder what else is out there. Now, Rainy, not only do I hope I can stump you as far as picking the book that I love, the book I didn't like so much, and then the book I haven't read, but I hope that you would enjoy. Uh, I am also hoping that you just really love all three of these books. Even the one that I didn't like, I'm choosing them all because I think you're going to enjoy them. I'm hoping you're going to enjoy them, at least one of them. It would be lovely if you got at least one five star out of these three books. Uh, so yeah, happy reading and best of luck. Sorry if my face is all red. I had to pause the video to have a giant coughing fit 
I don't know, something got stuck in my throat. Anyway, I was gonna say with the third one. I'm scared of this one because I've heard you love it or hate it, it's like bunny-esque, but the thing is not every bunny-esque book works for me. I can actually see Piranesi it's staring at me from my shelves right now. So I'm a little scared. If I was to guess right now off of these three books which one she loved, which one she hated, and which one she hadn't read, I would say that she didn't like Opal and Nev. She's never read Cleopatra and Frankenstein, and she really liked Piranesi. But I could be 100% wrong on that. But that's my initial gut reaction to those books. So I will come back to you once I've picked up one of these books and we start a reading. Okay, quick little update before I go into the Circus Center. Um, I know I have not talked about what this book is about. Um, I couldn't tell you what this book is about. This might be, this might be bad. This might be bad. I don't know if I can read 245 pages of this. I'm on page 21. I'm already on page part, or on part two. I have no idea what the hell is going on. I have no idea, okay? Literally every single sentence is like, it starts with like, let me give you an example. When the moon rose in the third northern hall, I went to the ninth vestibule. Entry for the first day of the fifth month in the year the albatross came to the southwestern halls. Okay? Okay? I don't understand that shit. And then let's find another one. Let's find another one. Okay? What about this one? I'm trying to find them. My gosh. Okay. My journals. Entry for the 17th day of the fifth month in the year the albatross came to the southwestern halls. And it's talking about one of my notebooks is my table of tides. Number four is labeled 10th day of the seventh month in the year. I discovered the coral halls to the ninth day of the fourth month in the year. I named the constellations. I don't understand. I don't know about this book. Oh, Leandra, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Okay. I'm going to try to read some more of this tonight and then... We're going to have to make a decision pretty swift. Am I going to read this or am I going to DNF this? I don't know. I never really know what's going on. Look at me sometimes like all you want to do is run. Hello, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears because I come to you bearing sad news. I got 36 pages into Piranesi, 36, and I have DNF'd this book. I tried. I tried, friends. I gave it the old college try. I could, I could, I could not do it. I could, I could not do it. The, I, I mean, and it's so sad because, like, this is a beautiful cover. And, um, yeah, this book is getting sold on Pango. Probably posted today, honestly, uh, because I, I don't, I don't know what's going on in this book. I really don't. There was, like, two pages that I was interested in when the other was talking to Piranesi. And then they stopped talking, and now he's on this tangent about something else. And those were the only two pages that I was interested in. And they were hardly talking at all. And I don't, I don't know. Like, literally, I have no idea what's going on in this book. Like, there is, it's just, this is the part that gets me. It's all the things they're talking about, vestibules and halls. And, like, I just don't understand. Like, over here, it says, like, I descended the staircase in the 40, Eloise, she's being so loud. I descended the staircase in the 43rd vestibule and entered the lower hall, the one that lies directly beneath the 37th southwestern hall. One effect of the wind was that the high tides were much higher and more violent than usual. The low tides were conversely lower. It was low tide and the sea had drawn back so far the hall was entirely empty of water, which hardly ever happens. Which wind like banners and pebbles, starfish and shells rattled across the stone pavement as the wind chased them across the dawn in the third vest. I can't, I can't, I can't. I don't want to hear in the third vestibule of the hall, in the fourth hall of the vestibule, in the hall of the dawn and the night. I don't, I don't care. I'm sorry. And to Leandra, to Leandra, my friend, why did you recommend me this book? Oh, especially because it makes me wonder if you've even read this book. Because if you've read this book, there's no way you would think I would like this. But maybe you did read this book. And because you knew I liked Bunny and Catherine House and all of that, which is how I described this to Brittany and Neva and Kelsey when I said I was going to DNF this. Maybe you thought this was my cup of weird. Well, let me just tell you, this is not 
my brand of weird. This is this is beyond me. This makes me feel dumb when I'm reading it. Like Stephen Graham Jones makes me feel dumb when I'm reading his books. Hence why I don't read him anymore. I felt stupid reading this. I'm sure this is a lovely book. I'm sure it has something super excellent to say, but um, I'm never going to know what it has to say because I couldn't get past page 36. And so that is that. I have DNF the first book for this vlog. That does not bode well for the rest of the vlog but you know what I learned that uh I can take this book off my shelf so I am clearing my TBR which Lee Andrew would be proud of me for doing so and so with that I'm gonna um I'm gonna let this book go and it's gonna find a better home to someone that is gonna love this book much better than I did so um goodbye I'm not gonna make my final decisions yet on which book she recommended for me like that she liked didn't like and hadn't read yet until I've read the other two and then I will make my decision but right now it's either the one you didn't like or that you did like but or no it's either the one that you didn't read or that you liked but I don't think you just liked this book I don't know I feel like if you read this you would have loved it so anyway I'm gonna go on to the next book which I think I'm gonna read Opal and Nev next because I want to read the next book that I'm not looking forward to. I want to save Cleopatra and Frankenstein for last because honestly, I'm really expecting to love that book. So I want to end with like a banger. So here we go. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Rainy on the Roach. You know what? That's going to be our new theme song for when Rainy's on the road driving. Okay. Conversations with Rainy. Anyway, um, I don't come to you very good news. Oh, uh, Leandra! Okay, I'm not DNFing yet. I'm not. But I started the revival of Opal and Nev. And I got 10 pages in. And I went, oh, I don't, I don't care about this book. I don't care about anything going on in this book. I don't care for this story. And you would think that I would. Because I absolutely loved Daisy Jones and The Six. I know they're not the same thing. But they're both, like, about musicians and interview styles and like all sorts of stuff so you would think that I would that would be my cup of tea but um I don't know what's not doing it for me on this one but I don't really care and I'm gonna give this one also the good old college try I'm gonna read to the 50 page mark I'm not allowing myself to DNF until I get to 50 pages and if I still feel like this at 50 pages in then we're gonna be on our second DNF of this three book vlog and I'm pretty sure we can can coherently all together say at that point that Leandra is not my booktube twin. Not even a little bit. I love her to pieces, but we're not booktube twins. Uh, I have hope for Cleopatra and Frankenstein. That's going to be the one that's going to pull us all together. That's going to be a five star, okay? I feel it in my bones. That's going to be a five star read, okay? Um, but it's going to be a journey to get there. It's going to be a journey, let me tell you. So I am about to head out to circus. And I will update you on kickoff sprints tonight. Probably I will vlog at some point to tell you whether I have decided to DNF this book or whether um, it has made a resounding comeback. Stay tuned. I had to come on with a second clip to say, of course we wouldn't be booktube twins because they're giving me a book they didn't like, a book that they never read. So like two thirds of it is already not promising. But regardless, I guess I would say we're not good at predicting Rainey's taste in books. However, it is also my fault because there are books on my TBR that I know I'm probably never going to read because they just don't fit my taste anymore and I just haven't gotten rid of them yet. And these are two perfect examples of that because I literally almost got rid of Opal and Nev and something made me not get rid of it. And I should have gotten rid of it because then Leandra wouldn't have put it on my TBR and I could have saved us all from this torment. So Re Rainy needs to get in check with herself and go back to her bookshelf and look at books that she is just never going to read because she just has no interest in them anymore and get them off of her freaking shelf. Okay. She's going to do that. Uh, but I'm sorry to current Rainy for the situation that we've put ourselves in. Good morning, friends. I probably need to come up here and make an update about Opal and Nev because I've been avoiding it for days now. Also try, sorry, I'll try to stay out of that light but my lighting is not that great in my classroom I don't want to share this update because it's not a good update I may or may not have DNF to this one as well and I got six pages in with this one you know I could have read it and I probably could have gotten through it because I used to always just be like hey it's not the worst book in the world power through but I have recently entered into what is going to be known as my DNF era. And 
Honestly, I'm so glad I've made it. I've DNF'd three books in February already because if a book is not speaking to me, then I'm not going to read it. Now, some of them, I'm going to give the full benefit of reading up to like 100, 150 pages and then decide. And honestly, what it's about, uh, it just, it doesn't speak to me in this time because it's kind of like a historical fiction. I mean, it's kind of like what Daisy Jones and the Six was trying to do, except for I was interested in the Daisy Jones and the Six stuff. I'm not interested in this. And I just know that it would not get anything more than a three from me anyway. And if I already know that it's starting off at a three, then like, what's the point of reading it? Like, you get what I'm saying? So I'm very sad that uh, we're two for two with DNF. And I think this is the one that Leandra didn't like, although I don't know why she didn't like it. I just have a feeling this is the one she didn't like. Uh, because the next one that I'm reading, which is the one I saved for last week that I was really hoping I would love it because it's on my 24 and 24, is Cleopatra and Frankenstein. And I, for some reason, cannot see Leandra having read that because that's just completely out of her wheelhouse. I just don't think she read that. But maybe she did and maybe she proves me wrong. I don't know. But uh, as far as Opal and Nev goes, that is the update you have for on this one. I can't even really tell you what was wrong with it because I only got six pages in. I just started to read it and went, nah, this is not for me. And Brittany and Neva and Kelsey all laughed and said, Rainy, you have to like one of the books that Leandra gives you. And I said, yeah, I know. Hopefully Cinder, or not Cinderella, hopefully Cleopatra is the one to do it. But in other words, I'm going to let you go for now. I'm going to start that. And then we'll see me again. Hear me out. Hear me out. Welcome back to Conversations with Rainy on the Road, episode two, where we are now on Leandro's vlog, and we're talking all about Cleopatra and Frankenstein, which I am only about 10% into by Coco Bellars. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this one was gonna be like our, our opus, like, I, I just thought it was gonna be our magnum opus, it was gonna be five stars from the gate, because I've been looking so forward to this book, and I've had it on my 24 and 24 and my 23 and 23 and I haven't gotten around to it and it has a beautiful cover and just everything about it speaks to me. I thought it was going to be the perfect like sad girl lit fake romance moment and I don't know yet. I'm 10% in and it's really weird. I I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't have an, a for, well formed enough opinion yet. However, what I can easily say with my entire chest is that Leandra did not read this book because I can tell you in the first like eight or nine pages, like the conversations that they're having and the things that are being said, I'm just like, Leandra would not read this book. Wouldn't read it. Sorry. Wouldn't happen. So Leandra, you never read this book. Plus that's like just two out of your wheelhouse. Like I'm not saying you couldn't read it, but you ain't reading this sad girl lit fake book. Like let's be real with ourselves. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So Leandra has not read this, which I hope I love it because I literally had it on my 24 and 24 for this year. So I'm going to commit and read some more. But it's getting weird. Losing almost all my energy. Let's have a talk, a come to Jesus moment, if you will. Don't shed a tear for Cleopatra and Frankenstein. I'm currently, I'm currently, currently 41% into this book. So I have read 158 pages and I still have about 200 to go. I hate this book. I hate this book. I hate this book. The only reason I'm considering finishing this is because I want to be able to knock this off of my 24 and 24 and I don't want to DNF any of those books. However, I am kind of torturing myself at this moment 
like half of it doesn't even make sense the little vignettes that it goes on it goes it's just crazy there's too many characters there's characters that were in the heads of that i don't give a rat's booty about i just this is not the book that i thought it was and i'm very saddened by this honestly i was so excited for this book this was gonna be my lit girl moment this is not that moment friends this is not that moment okay so we need to adjust our expectations going into this so from here on out i'm gonna finish this book but I feel like I have slumped so hard because of this vlog. And it is not Leandra's fault, as I've said. I need to, going forward, when people pick books off of my physical TBR Goodreads, I need to only have books on there that I'm actually interested in reading. However, then you would think that then if you take a book off of your physical TBR, but you actually own it, doesn't that mean you don't want it anymore? And you would think yes, but I can think of a specific books like Within These Walls by Anya Alborn. I've heard Anya Alborn's a fabulous thriller writer. I'm just not in my thriller era right now, like again. So I need to, I want to save on to that for a whole on to that for like a rainy day. And like other books like Bear Town and things. But like, I don't want to read that right now. I want to read it eventually. Like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I need to have like a physical TBR like potentials and then like, my, I don't know. I don't know. I need to like reassess the way that I do things on Goodreads. Uh, but I've kind of been slumping hard. And whenever I sit down to pick up a book, I don't read a lot because this is in the back of my mind going, you still need to read this and finish it by Sunday for Leandra's vlog. And it's Tuesday. What are you doing with your life? And I don't like that. I don't like that. Ugh. It's fine. I'm going to go finish. I'm going to read. I have about 35 minutes before I have a class. So I'm going to read. Let's see where we get. Time for another edition of Conversations with Rainy on the Roach. I don't know what episode we're on. But anyway, we're talking about Cleopatra and Frankenstein. We are now 70% into this book. And I don't know how to explain this book because my emotions are just all over the place. Because there are parts of this book I absolutely hate with like every fiber of my chest. And then there are parts that are not that bad, that are kind of interesting. Like it just depends on the chippity chip chapter, honestly, because I think the problem is that each chapter either follows Cleopatra, Frankenstein, or one of their friends, uh, including like Santiago, Eleanor, Anders, all these different people, right? Some of these people are truly shitty, terrible people that I don't give a rat's booty about what they're doing. Some of them are interesting. Some of them I just don't care for. And so, and then there's also just parts like there was this very bad animal cruelty moment that I cannot condone. Poor little Jesus is all I'm going to say in that regard. And... Um, there's just been some other stuff. So it's like, honestly, it might end up pulling a three, which would be quite shocking because I, I don't know how to explain this book. Like, I, there's no good explanation of this book. And I don't even know if I explained this book. It's basically just a romance between a young girl and an older man. Like, I think there's like a 15, 20 year age gap between them. And then it's an impulsive marriage. They get married very quick. And so it's just how their lives go on from that. And like the friendships that they have and how those evolve and like all of that. That's what it's mainly about. And it's just weird, but I'm kind of digging it for parts of it, but parts of it are just dragging. And I just want to be done with this book, honestly, so that we can call it done, be done with this vloggy vlog, and go back to our merry lives. So I will probably come back at you when I'm finished, but you never know. Oh, I don't care about characters other than Cleopatra and Frankenstein. I don't need a whole chapter on Frank's, like, financially unstable little sister and her basically having a relationship with a prostitute like I don't I don't need that I don't care for it I'm really over this book but we only have 70 pages to go this book is taking forever I've been reading it for like two weeks now and I wanna be done I wanna be done I have 70 pages left I must be done you're welcome for this. <laughs> this book is making me so chaotic. I'm sorry, friends, for the terrible lighting, but now we are doing conversations with Rainy at the drive through Yeah! You're welcome for all my singing in this vlog. Anyway, I have finished the beast, the she-beast that is Cleopatra and Frankenstein. And do you know what I gave it? Do you know what I gave it? I gave it a two. 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 Uh, when I finished, I did not initially know what it was going to go. I thought it could have, it flipped, it flipped and flopped back between a two, a three, a three point. Okay. It never went to a 3.5. It was between a two and a three, honestly, the entire time. Um, I finally went with a two because 
there were just so many chapters I didn't care about. I didn't care about hearing from any perspective other than Cleopatra and Frank. I didn't care about the little sister. I didn't care about Frankenstein's other love interests. Like I don't give, a, like I've said a million times, a rat's booty. I just I didn't care. And there was just so much of that along with the fact that like they are just truly terrible people and I just I just couldn't get behind half of the stuff. And then the romance didn't even go the way I wanted it. Like it just no. And honestly, it wasn't really about anything at all. When you get down to it, nothing really happened. And I get it. It's a character study, like a deep dive into these characters. But like, I didn't care enough about these characters to want a deep dive into their lives. Okay. I'm very sad because we've had two DNFs and a two star. And this was literally a five star prediction, 24 and 24. Thought I was going to love it. And now I'm going to put it on my pango after this vlog because I did not enjoy it. And it really saddens my soul to say that. But we're done with this book. I feel like my slump can be over because I've been slumping hard because of these books and I just want to get to some romanticy in my life. And so um, we are going to move on from here. But before we do that, I have one more little surprise for you. So uh, as we know, this vlog has not been going well. I've had two DNFs and Cleopatra and Frankenstein is not doing that well at the current moment. Uh, it's not a DNF but it's not looking to be more than a 2.5 or 3 star. And I didn't want to make little Leandra's heart all sad when she sees that this vlog is not going well because I assume that she's having a great time. So I messaged her and said, hey girl, we got to recommend me another book so that we have a chance of having a success in this vlog. And so she chose another book that she either liked or didn't like, and I don't know which one it is. And I am excited because it is a thriller that I did not actually have on my TBR. I told her she could stray away from my physical TBR for this one. I've seen this one around and I just haven't picked it up, but I heard of this dark academia. And so I am excited to add it to this TBR. And that is The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile. And so I'm actually 20% into this right now, but it is very meta. So it's about an author who's writing about an author who's writing a story. So it's like threefold. And there's four characters, four of them meet at this library and they all are like aspiring authors to be. And then all of a sudden there's a scream in the library and someone ends up murdered. And so like, it's to find out like, was one of them the murderer? Like who was the murderer? And within that, she's also writing a murder mystery, I think reflecting on these events. And there's a fan that is at the end of every chapter commenting on the latest chapter of hers and talking about how much he loves it. Um, and so it's been very interesting, but I'm 20% in and I have no idea who the killer is yet, but I'm living my best life and it's going really good. We are about to go to Chief Lynn to visit Aaron's grandparents. And my goal is to read as much as I can on the way there and back. So I'm going to get a lot more of this read and I'll let you know what I think. Hello. Um, we're having a little conversation about the woman in the library. I read this so freaking fast. I've read this before I've even finished Cleopatra and Frankenstein, but you're seeing this after Cleopatra and Frankenstein. This book was very bingeable. It's only like 260 pages. I started it last night, read most of it today. I was at like 22% this morning. So uh, for enjoyment purposes, it was, it was enjoyable. However, the ending, the ending and some things that happened kind of totally tanked it for me. It's a three star. That's not terrible, but... I think I was watching Bree's video the other day and I agree with her. Like a 3.5 and up means that I would recommend it widely and a three means I'm not sure. Now, I will recommend this as a great dark academia beginner book because like it's easily bingeable. The characters are pretty easy to follow. Like the story goes like it's an interesting story, okay? I just wouldn't recommend it to the masses because I don't know how I feel about the ending and I really wish I could talk about the ending because like just want to give it away but let's just say first off I hate books that the story wraps up Miss Eloise is talking <laughs> that the book wraps up literally like five minutes after like at the very end it was like five pages left and everything was explained and all the answers and everything happens in like five pages and I always just don't like books that wrap up so quickly I'm like take a little more time flesh it out this book could have been about 300 pages instead of 260 you know uh the other thing is so it's a book within a book right so the author uh, the author, the book, the person in the book is an author writing a book. And the whole book is literally her book that she's writing. And at the end of every chapter, her real life friend, like pen pal from across the way, is giving her feedback on it. And there's a whole separate storyline with what goes on between like her and that man that I don't understand. Like there was something that happened in it that like was interesting. And then they didn't go anywhere with it. And I'm like, why was that mentioned? Like, that was kind of pointless to me. And that kind of pissed me off. And then we also have the ending of this book. 
and there was something at the ending that happened too that I was like, I don't understand what you're trying to, to do in this last sentence. So that kind of pissed me off. And so between the two things, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'm too stupid for this book because this book is not like an insanely talented book. But I, I don't know. So I've landed at a three. It was a good time. I read it super quick. I had a pretty good time with it, but I wouldn't write home to like the cows about this. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't write anything substantial about this. So, I mean, that's good because at least I have a three star and you know that things are looking up. So Leandra did good. A three star is fine. I just wouldn't write a link or mention it to everyone, but I had a good time with it. And if I were to think based off of how many murder mysteries and books that Leandra reads, I would imagine that she also did not enjoy this book. Maybe for the same reasons I did. Maybe not. But I feel like she didn't enjoy this book either. I'm just not sure what she would have rated it. Maybe she would have also rated it a three. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to check Goodreads because I don't actually have a video of her saying what she thought of this one. So I'm going to check that and then I'll be back. Okay, now I'm in my son's bedroom with Eloise. But uh, upon further reflection... I think I'm moving it to 2.5, maybe a 2.75, because I'm really, really mad at the ending of this book. And I, I read a bunch of one-star and two-star reviews, and then I read a bunch of five-star reviews. And the five-star people are crazy, but the one- and two-star people feel exactly the way that I did. And Leandra does too, because I literally read her review, and everything that she said, I felt exactly the same. Like, I don't understand what this author was trying to do. I'm just so frustrated. Oh, I'm sorry, Leandra. I'm I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, friends. Living my best life. I just realized I never recorded myself reacting to like Leandra's like final thoughts, like which book was which. And if we're locking in my answers, I thought Cleopatra and Frankenstein was the one she didn't read. Opal and I was the one that she read and didn't like. And Piranesi was the one that she read and didn't like. I don't think she liked women in the library either, but I already know that because I looked it up on Goodreads. So we're going to react now, see how I did. Also, if you hear guitar in the background, my husband is playing. We got to work with the time we've been given. You know? All right, here we go. Hello again. If you're watching me, that means that Rainy, you have finished the vlog. Congratulations. You read all three books. I hope you enjoyed them all. I hope you didn't DNF any of them. If so, that's on me for not picking all three books that you would enjoy. It was my goal at the beginning. Uh, but I'm going to reveal to everyone uh, which book assigned to which prompt. So one of them is one I loved, one of them is one I didn't like, and another one is a book that I haven't read but I thought Rainy would enjoy. So uh, the first book that I assigned was The Final Revival of Opal and Nev, and this book was a book I didn't like. I gave it two stars, but I did think that Rainy would really enjoy it because uh, Rainy, you did really love Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and both of them have similar writing styles, I think, as far as interview format, uh, being a bit of historical fiction, being in the music industry, but what I thought could be cool was Donnie Walton providing that BIPOC presence, providing a black woman character as our protagonist. And so, yeah, I thought that I could kind of switch things up for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Well, I was 100% right. I knew it. I knew she didn't like this one. I can't really talk or comment on whether it's the same as Daisy Jones and the Six because I got nine pages in. It just, it didn't work for me. So on to book two. The second book that I recommended was Cleopatra and Frankenstein. This one was the one that I haven't read, but I thought Rainy would like. Uh, because it has some romance, it has some interesting tropes, but I couldn't remember which tropes Rainy really liked. So I'm not sure if she likes the age gap or not. So that was a risk, uh, but it did look like a fun premise. It looked like it might be kind of a quick read, uh, even though it is literary fiction, which I know sometimes can be slow. So yeah, did you get that one right? Uh, I love me an age gap, Leandra. You did good, you did good. But this book, no bueno. And no, don't ever read it you would not like it. And then that means that the third book I recommended, Piranesi by Susanna Clark, that one was the book that I absolutely loved. So I haven't read anything else by Susanna Clark. I have to admit that I think I read it years ago, back when I did BOTM, Book of the Month, and it was in my one of my packages. And so I took a risk on it and I really enjoyed it. It's a super short, quick fantasy. It's not super uh, advanced. It's not high fantasy, I would say, because they don't go into too much depth about really anything. We just kind of have to accept the fantastical world we're in. So I maybe that was the hint because it was a short fantasy. Maybe you did get it right uh, and you guessed that this was the one I loved. 
way, uh, whether you got them right or wrong, I do really hope that you found some fun reads, Rainy. Uh, at least four stars or higher. None of them were DNFs. I'm going to find out, like everyone else, once this video comes up. But thank you again for inviting me to join you. I can't wait to see the series continue and see uh, who you end up picking for episode three. Well, Miss Leandra, we need to we need to right the wrongs and have you be a contender again after a couple more rounds have gone through because we struggled. We struggled, we we rightly so struggled. So let's wrap up this loggy vlog and uh, talk about the four books I tried to read. So if we were gonna rate them from best to worst, then we would have the final revival of, or worst to best. We'd have the final revival of Opal Nev because I only got nine pages in. Pierre and Effie because I got 26 pages in. Cleopatra and Frankenstein, which I gave a two stars. And The Woman in the Library, which I gave 2.5 stars. So if we do it backwards, let me, set it up for us really quick. Here is our ratings. Two DNFs, a two, and a 2.5 star. I'm very sad about it. I'm feeling some type of way about it. I wish I felt better about it, friends. I wish we'd had a better time. I still love Leandra as a person. I still wish to do this again with her soon. If you fall all the way to the end of this, let's put a book, sure, for the woman in the library, because that's the one that I like the most, and put a comment down below of a booktuber that I should try this again with next, because we've had Brittany, we've had Leandra, if we're keeping score, Brittany is obviously the winner so far, but, you know, it's all friendly competition, if you will. And with that, I'll see you guys in a video very, very soon. Bye!